Oh my god, I'm taking my shoes off. Yes, we are home from work. I think I just broke my mattress. This is a new vlog and it's a lot to start off at the beginning. I just got home from work. It is a fresh Monday afternoon. In my last vlog's shenanigans, I accidentally left my book at work over the weekend. So, Today I retrieved her. I'm currently reading The Shadow of the Wind by Carlos Ruiz Zafon. This is a historical fiction book set in Barcelona in the 1940s and 50s about this young boy whose father shows him this magical book place where it has really rare copies of books and he gets to choose one. And long story short, he becomes obsessed with this author and wants to find the rest of his works, but they've been mysteriously wiped out and there's this person hunting down the copy that he has, so it's really mysterious. It's very good. It's beautiful. I'm on page 124. I spend a lot of my lunch break devouring this because I don't have much time throughout the day to actually get to it, but loving it. And especially for a literary fiction book that's one of the oldest on my TBR that I hadn't read. I don't know why I put it off so long because it's beautiful and easy to read. And then after work today, I decided to go on a field trip. Two vlogs ago, I talked about how I got a library card and I have decided that library is garbage. The selection is booty. Every book that I'm looking forward to reading from the library, like new releases and stuff I want to review, they don't have it. Like not even it's checked out. They don't, they've never heard of it. So I was really discouraged. There's not even a button on their website to request books. You have to talk to them in person. And it's just not my vibe. Didn't love her. But I researched another library that's like 10 minutes away from me. And I went today and I got my card and it was so good. The front section is new books and I found both books I wanted to check out today there. Like literally within 10 minutes. <laughs> Those two books are Serpent and Dove by Shelby Maher Maharin. I'm reading this entirely because of the hype. Apparently it's sexy and cool and fun. The thing about this is that I don't typically enjoy books about witchcraft or like witches. It's just a genre that I can't get into. I don't know why I just can't wrap my head around it. So it's gonna be interesting. <laughs> I've heard mixed reviews ever since this blew up with hype, but I wanted to try it, which is why it's out from the library. I don't trust myself to give this a five-star rating and pay full price for it, so. And then, I am so happy I found this. I got Well Met by Jen DeLuca. This is an adult contemporary romance about these two people that work at a renaissance fair together. They're enemies, but when they're in character, they have to be nice to one another, so it's so angsty sounding. I actually have to review this one for NetGalley. I got an arc of it before it came out, and then it came out, and I still haven't reviewed it, and I know I'll read it faster if I have the physical version, so I'm just gonna read this copy and review it for NetGalley and review it on my Goodreads and review it here. God bless my new library for having it. <laughs> so the plan for the rest of the day is pretty loose. Today's gonna be an interesting week. I go to a concert on Wednesday. I have a packed schedule on Thursday for work and then on Friday I have off because it's my mom's birthday and then Saturday and Sunday there will be no reading because I have a conference to go to. We'll see how this week goes but I have some exciting books I just picked up today so I'm eager to get going. Hello fellow boo boo the fools. I got distracted watching TikToks. Story of my life. The summary of my night is I got distracted and didn't read. I assume I'm only gonna oh it's already 11. I'm probably gonna be so exhausted in like five minutes. <laughs> 11 o'clock is like my windows power off time. I'm like 11 o'clock. But I'm really enjoying my book so I want to finish some of it before tomorrow and then I'll read it on my lunch break tomorrow and then I want to read it while I have work but I can't because I have work. But one thing I forgot to mention is that last night when I didn't have that book I was really bored for like an hour and I wanted to procrastinate getting ready for work tomorrow. <laughs> I almost said school tomorrow. I wish. I picked a random book from my TBR jar, which I'm trying to do more often, and the book was Once in Future by Amy Rose Capetta and Corey McCarthy. This is a sci-fi retelling of Arthur and the Round Table, Arthur and the Knights, Arthur and Merlin. So the storyline is Arthur is tasked to go defeat something, or I forgot what the plot is. So the gist is that Arthur is reincarnated every couple decades and Merlin has to train him to complete some task. I forget. But every year it's failed and so he reincarnates. And for the first time ever, Arthur reincarnates as a woman. So the main character of this book is Ari and she lives in a universe where Earth is now 
not habitable. So there's intergalactic travel and they're on the moon and a bunch of wild sci-fi stuff. I didn't realize it was so sci-fi and I'm not a fan of sci-fi. So whenever I was reading the first chapter of this, I was like, oh, we about to DNF. But I kept with it and I kept the faith. <laughs> and now I'm on page 52. And I'm glad I stuck with it. I really like Merlin's point of view. It's very funny. This whole book is full of diversity. I've already tabbed a couple lines I liked because they're funny. This isn't my cup of tea, so I don't anticipate it'll get a full five star rating, but so far it's fun. I think I'm just gonna go back to the original book I was reading and then I can finish this one and then we can read a thousand library books. <laughs> but that's the plan for the rest of my night. I'm gonna read until I get too tired to keep reading. That's the only time that's valid for me to do that Australian accent because I'm actually gonna go see an Australian tonight. Tonight is my second Dean Lewis concert of the year. Me and my boy let the record show this is gonna be the outfit I wear for when we fall in love. Yeah, I'm leaving in like half an hour. Rachel and I are going. I'm gonna get some footage of my mans. But I wanted to update what I read because I read last night and I read today during work. So I'm now on page 245 of The Shadow of the Wind. And it's slow going, but it's very worth it. There's a couple chapters where we'll get into Julian's backstory and I'm just like, do I care? I mean, I do, but also I don't, which is also kind of a factor about, I keep getting the story mixed up, so it will reveal new things about this author and like this person was lying or this detail doesn't match up with this detail, but I'm forgetting the details, so I'm like, wait, what? So I like the story about this lonely boy tracking down this author because he's in love with his book so much, but now that they've found out that like, oh, he disappeared, where did he go? What happened to him? It's turning into a mystery. And we know me and mysteries. <laughs> it's still a five star in my book, even though a couple of the pages lost me. And as you can see, I'm still tabbing the ever loving heck out of it. So it's beautiful. Did I mention it's beautiful? Speaking of beautiful, if Dean Lewis doesn't play my favorite song tonight, I'm walking out. So if I get home from this concert early, you can assume it's because he didn't play Chemicals or Let Go. Ah, it's gonna be so fun! It's also so interesting because the first time I ever went to a concert, Dean Lewis was the first concert I ever went to, and that was back in like March, and I was terrified. I had an anxiety attack like all day because I was so dreading it. Like, I'm not gonna like the crowd, it's gonna be too loud, it's gonna be terrible, but I've been to two concerts since and it's fun, so I'm feeling a lot better today other than my phone not being charged, which is terrible, if you know. Let me demonstrate my fit for you. Hello. Ooh, who is she? It tried to put me on the cover of Vogue, but my legs were too long. I'm probably gonna roll up my sleeves when I get inside. I don't know if this makes me look like a clown. It comes and goes in waves. Okay, bye. <laughs>
such a day at work today and such a day after work today I can't even recall when the last time I vlogged is but I got this new sweater from Walmart I feel like a Neapolitan ice cream sandwich my feet hurt so bad today I'm gonna sit in bed and relax I'm gonna have some delicious snacks I have peanut butter pretzels and peanut butter M&Ms I went to Target tonight because my mom's birthday is tomorrow and I had to get some stuff for her and while I was there I splurged on myself <laughs> High key, I could have just gotten this from the library and I thought about it, but I was like, no, I want to support this author. So I got Dear Sweet Pea by Julie Murphy. Terrible lighting, but who gives a hoot? Also, let's cover the fact I'm not wearing pants. So Julie Murphy has written Dumplin' and Puddin' and other books. Anyway, she's from North Texas, so I've seen her like multiple times over the years. Dare I consider us friends? I don't know. She would recognize me in a crowd, so take that from what you will. Anyway, this is her first middle grade novel. So this is about Patricia, who lives next door to this older woman who does an advice column where people mail her letters. And that woman has to leave, so she asks Patricia to be in charge of forwarding those letters. But then she recognizes the handwriting on one of the letters and reads it. It's been a while since I've heard Julie Murphy talk about this. I don't know if the girl like takes over the advice column instead of forwarding them or if she just snoops in on them. It's highly illegal, but either way, it just sounded like a cool concept and I also love Julie Murphy and I want to support her, so we're reading it. I can almost guarantee this is going to have a plus size main character and I'm so happy. It's gorgeous. It's been a crazy couple days. I know I complained in my last vlog like, oh, cleaning is so hard when you have your own apartment. And that's exactly what happened again tonight. <laughs> I had like moldy cups on my counter and I was like, I'm disgusting, I need to fix my life. But for the past five days, I've been busy and from 8 a.m. to 9 p.m. And today is my only day off. <laughs> and it just made me so cranky and I just want to rest. But I have a conference I have to go to this weekend, so I can't read and I can't have downtime. So I'm taking what I can. Honestly, I'm kind of shocked it's not even 11 o'clock yet. I've been cleaning all night and I'm finally gonna have time to myself to sit in bed and read, which hasn't happened in like five days. And usually every day I can at least carve out some time for that, but I haven't been able to. Complaining aside, this is a vlog clip to be grateful that after a crazy schedule, I have a load of laundry that I need to get and then I'm done with my chores. I can just read more of my book and it's not that big of a deal. I've been sneaking in a few pages of The Shadow of the Wind every now and then when I can and I've made it to page 264. Coincidentally, the amount of days that Juliet Ferrars was locked up in her cell at the beginning of Shatter Me, but I feel like I have nothing new to add about this book. It's just fine. I just don't have time to read it, which is gonna change. Let's go read. I was in a bad mood tonight when I was cleaning, but I found these Christmas lights. Here, let me turn off my lamp. I found these lights and I made it around my headboard so it's more festive and I have clean sheets. We're making the best of it. <laughs> Even though my nightstand is still a mess, ignore. I lied, I'm gonna keep complaining while I'm here because I just had new thoughts about what I was talking about. Everything that I said to myself in college was, oh, I'll do that when I'm graduated because I'll have more time. Because homework took up so much of my time, I was like, oh, when I have a full-time job, I'll just go to work, come home, then I have all that free time in the weekends. So I told myself I would date after I graduated. I would go to the gym after I graduated. I would do all this stuff. I would go to concerts. I would do more stuff after I graduated. And maybe it's because I consider YouTube a second job. So I read in my free time rather than prioritizing other things. But I just feel so busy all the time that I don't know how I'm ever going to find time for other things. Like I've wanted to go to the gym for the past month, but by the time I get home and I feed the cats and I do my dinner and I'm 
I'm editing a vlog or I want to get ahead on reading or I need to clean this or I need to go do that errand. It's like, I don't have time to go to the gym because now I need to be in bed by 11 in order to get up at 7. I'm just complaining, but I feel like there's no time in the day. I feel like Alexander Hamilton and I look like a lobster. This is what being on your period does to you. I just want to complain. I'm like not even in the mood to read anymore. I'm just upset. Mm. So... I feel better since last night. I had a Snickers. I got packages when I got back to my house. I forget to check my mail all the time. So I had a back order or backlog of stuff I needed to open. So first there's a book that I actually got to my home address that my dad brought me. It's from a publisher. I don't know what this book is. <laughs> it looks like this. It came in a nice arc wrap. There's a, I think this is like a tree ornament because this book comes out in the winter. So like January, Christmas time. Then you take it out. And it's this book. The publisher, which is Source Book, said this is their like highly anticipated winter release. And this book is about a guy who is found like almost dead, if not dead, and then is revived in a river. And ever since that incident, he can now see alternate worlds and like the world is glitching, like the Matrix. I haven't seen the Matrix, but that's a glitch in the Matrix. It's like a Reddit thing. I read about it. Anyway, so this says it is Inception meets The Magicians. I don't know what The Magicians is, but I do have a grasp of Inception, so it's kind of like that weird, the world is twisted and not what we think. I don't know if I'll read it, but I want to hold on to it and see what other people think, and then we'll go from there. Also, I'm going to remove this from my shelf, because that's annoying. Um, minor caveat on that, if you want to trade me a paperback of Carry On for a hardback, I got the new hardback book cover, that's what this is. That's my address. Um, not anymore. You can look at it. I'll trade a paperback for a hardback. Long story short. Wait, let me put this back. <laughs> so I got two packages. This one I know where it's from. I did a trade on Depop. Wait, wrong one. This one I know where it's from. I did a trade on Depop. This? I don't recognize. Watch me just forgot that I ordered it and I know exactly what it is. I'm super excited about this one though. This is from Diane. She gave me a cute card and a sticker with Manon and Stinky Dragon on it. So the book that I traded her for is No Judgments by Meg Cabot. I actually don't even know if this book is out yet. No, yeah, September 2019, it is. This book sounds so cute. I've heard no one talk about it. And honestly, I think it's gonna be more of like a women's fiction than a romance book. I mean, they're cussing on the cover, so one can hope. But this is about a woman named Bree who lives in Florida. One day a hurricane comes to her town and rather than evacuating, she stays behind to help all the dogs and animals that were like left behind. And then she meets a guy who helps her do that. That could be totally wrong, but that's what I get from the synopsis and I hope, I'm hoping it's that. And it sounds so wholesome. Hello, dogs boys so yeah there's a lot more like drama and intrigue like oh oh the guy's her ex so yeah there's just there's angst there's dogs i'm so excited and no one's talked about this so it could be garbage but i'm sweating really hard because i'm so excited one thing i forgot to mention is whenever i went to the concert with rachel she got me like a housewarming gift and it's this art print of josh and hazel from oh i have it right here from josh and hazel's guide to not dating and it's precious i don't know where i'm gonna put this but it's so stinking cute so thank you rachel okay final mystery package that i'm probably gonna open and remember that i ordered this what in the hickety heck oh i did, I did request this book <laughs> wow that's embarrassing an author that i've been following since like 2015 dm'd me on twitter asking if i want her newest book and i was like Yes. This author is Mia, who wrote Jerkbait, I think 2015 or 2016. Loved it. And then, this is her newest book called Somebody Told Me. So this book is about a gender fluid teenager who goes to live with their uncle who's a priest. So this is about a teenager struggling with identity. It says, a novel of trauma, identity, and survival. Oh, it's gonna be hard hitting. Mia's first book, Jerkbait, this followed a gay teenager and it was really hard hitting and really realistic and that's why I liked it a lot and I just hope that this one's gonna have the same vibe as far as being realistic and true to teenage years. So this comes out April 2020, so we have quite a long ways to go before you can get your hands on this, but I would love to read it. I loved Mia's writing in this book. Excited to read her sophomore novel. Thank you, Mia. Oh, I have an update. Oh, 
I read. Whenever I was at the conference today, there was an hour long segment where there wasn't a panel that I could attend. Like all of them were way over my head. So I sat down and read a bit and I got a huge chunk of the way through. I got to page 370. I could very realistically knock the rest of this out tonight. And like, honestly, that should be my goal because I need to upload this <laughs> today or tomorrow and I haven't even started editing. I have an almond milk frap from Starbs and I want to sit down, give that a good slurp, and get as far into this as I can. I'm still really enjoying it, even though even the mystery's coming more and more together, and I've forgotten a lot of the characters. <laughs> I wish there was a character guide or they would like give me a pat on the back and be like, this character, who by the way, is the one I mentioned earlier, and it doesn't do that. But other than that, still beautiful. It took a twist. I'm invested. Let's finish it. This caffeine is going to give me an anxiety attack, but it's so worth it. I finished it. <laughs> oh my god, I can't breathe. It was so beautiful. <laughs> oh my god. I need to go breathe. I'm not okay. Gordo, I'm not okay. It was so good. I knew everything would come back around in the end, but that was so much. Here's the thing, I'm not even like sad crying. It's just a beautiful book that like comes full circle and it makes you care about the characters and it has so much. <laughs> I was gonna give it like 4.5 stars because I thought the mystery part of it, like I don't like how it would jump to other perspectives and just randomly insert someone else's perspective in, but I don't even care, like the last, 50 pages of that book was such a whirlwind. I can't breathe. <laughs> Five stars, Pulitzer, Nobel Peace Prize, Oscars, Tonys, Emmys, whatever books get. It was so good. This is one of those books where I finish it and I immediately want to restart it because the stuff that's revealed at the end changes the entire book. And there were a couple parts that I guessed, but like it doesn't matter. And I just want to immediately reread it even though it's 500 pages long and it took me two weeks to read. This is going to be one of those books where I'll think about it and start crying again. <laughs> See, here I go. Oh my god. But wow, if you have not read this book and you like literary fiction, you have to read it. Oh my god, it's one of my favorites of the year. And you need to give me cuddles. Mommy is sensitive right now. It was a good book. He's like, what are books? <laughs> Goodbye. <sighs> He's like, I did not like that. <laughs>